What is going on, everybody on YouTube? Steve here, Raking Profit over at rakingprofit.com. Coming back to you with another live video. And in today's video, we've got not only a special topic, but also a special guest. We have my good friend, Vinny, who is on the show. Why don't you say hello to everybody? Hi, everybody. So Vinny, actually, uh, we grew up together. We met in uh, in high school, right? Was it, what was it, sophomore year? Yep. Sophomore year, and uh, we became good friends, and we've, you know, we've been friends for a long time. But uh, yeah, funny enough, what, about five years ago, four or five years ago, something around there, um, when I had gotten my first warehouse space, um, Vinny was actually my first employee who was helping me out. And uh, what were you doing back then for me? Uh, I was doing the clothes. Yeah, the clothes, pictures. I was taking pictures, doing measurements, writing the descriptions. List, listing templates. Remember, yep. remember yeah, <laughs> having remember the whole that. stack? And the funny thing is before I even had, uh, well, rented my warehouse, we were actually bringing all of my clothes to his actual house. You were living back at your parents' house back then. And uh, I would drag over like 50 clothing items. Remember, it was yeah. 800 pounds of stuff. And we had used his living room to create a photography um, setup. And we had, did we have a backdrop set up or no? Um, yeah, we yeah. did. Backdrop, mannequin. Yep. Jeez, I wonder what your mother was thinking. Like, what the heck are these guys <laughs> doing? Turning my living room into a photography center. But it's crazy. Like, that that was the beginning for me, and uh, you know, Vinny was helping me out, and then we moved into the uh, warehouse space, and he had worked for me for you know a year or two. Um, but fast forward, uh, what about two and a half years ago? Because you had stopped working for me because I'd moved on. I was doing Amazon, I was doing all these other things, and I wasn't really going full blast with eBay. You started your own eBay business, what three years ago? Yeah, about three years ago. And you were selling what clothing, shoes, all different. I was selling everything. Anything I could get my hands on, <laughs> I was selling. So, you know, and that's kind of how it is when you first get started. You start experimenting with all different types of items. And, and then eventually, most people, they find their their niche. Me, I found clothing. Um, what did you end up finding as your niche over the last year? <laughs> toys. Toys. <laughs> believe it or not. Toys. So what we're going to talk about is, uh, you know, how to start making $1,000 a month selling toys on eBay for complete beginners and uh, you're doing what anywhere between three to five thousand a month right now um, my 60 days are at six six thousand okay cool cool so um, it goes up and down some months are more some some yeah. months are slower um, but I'm sure things will be picking up but um yeah we're gonna talk about toys today we're really really excited about that and uh, I want to know right now who likes the sound of this who's interested in learning about toys if you are interested in learning about toys we got 131 people watching live right now uh -oh. put a yes in the comment right now i want to know who is excited to learn who's also selling toys right now if you are currently selling toys um what, what should they say in the comments if they're already selling toys give them a word toys toys so write the word toys if you are actually already selling toys i'm curious uh, to know, we got Seth Jacob in the house. We got Kim, Mary Beth, Kathleen's Boutique says, yes, love sh selling toys. We got George, BRS, Anna, reselling with Rob. What's up, uh, what's up, Rob? Good to see you, uh, Becky, Linda. So, so somebody's asking about sex toys. We are not talking about sex toys in this video. It's time to grow up, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, we're talking about children's toys, <laughs> maybe some adult toys, but not the ones that you're thinking about, you sicko. Um, so let's get into this video. It looks like there's a bunch of people who are excited about toys. Quite a few people who are selling toys. Linda's giving a little funny emoji about that last comment. So why should you listen to us? Um, well, you know, I'll be 100% 100% transparent. I don't have a lot of experience when it comes to selling toys. Uh, that's Vinny's area. But personally, I've been selling all t different types of items on eBay for over five years, clothing, video games, electronics, computer items, shoes. I have sold quite a few toys on eBay. Um, but you know, I don't have as much knowledge as Vinny. You know, Vinny, he's been doing anywhere from three to 5,000 a month um, on eBay um, for what? You've been doing eBay, what, three years, you said? Yeah. Um Three years eBay, toys about a year. And what's crazy, yeah. yeah, and I forgot to mention, 
your 60 days right now is about 6,000. So that's about 3,000 yep. a month. I know you've had better months than that before yep. in the past. Um, part time. Tell them about that. You're working a full-time job and you're doing this what, on the side. I have a full-time job. <laughs> I, I work from eight to four, sometimes five, six. And yes, this is my part-time job on Sundays and Mondays. I list and I ship during the week. I go out and source and do some listing during the week too after work. And yeah, it's part-time. So for all the people who say, I can't do this or $3,000 isn't a lot of money. Like, $3,000 is a lot of money. Now, obviously that's not all profit, um, but he's doing this part time. How many of you guys out there? I want to know how many people type a one in the comment. If you're working a full-time job right now and you're selling on eBay part time, I want to know how many people and, and type a two, if you're full-time on eBay. So one, if you're part time and you're working a full-time job and, and type a two, if, uh, if you're full-time on eBay, I want to see who we have in the comments right now. Um, wow. A lot of ones, one, 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 one. They're all ones. Most people are working full-time jobs and they're doing this on the side. That's crazy. I don't think I've seen, <laughs> we got a half. We got, uh, I can't even keep up with it. There's so many people right now, mostly ones, 80% of the people watching now, and we have 182 people watching are, uh, working full-time jobs, doing this on the side. So that's pretty cool right there. So before we get started, we did want to let you know, and I'm sure you guys already know about this because I've been promoting the idea of this over the last couple of weeks. If you've seen any of my toy videos about Hasbro or Ninja Turtle or GI Joe, um, I had mentioned that I was working with a friend of mine who um, is selling toys. Well, now you've met my friend Vinny and uh, I convinced him to uh, create the content for this guide. So he pretty much shared, maybe you want to talk a little bit about it. What is inside this guide? Um, I took the best 47 toys that you sell kind of like on a regular basis. Yes. That helped me kind of excel in, in my eBay and keep moving forward with keeping attacking toys. Like these are the things that I got started with. These are the ones that are fairly easy to find. They have good value. People are still collecting all these, um, hot toys right now. So I, I, tried to put together the best possible profitable toys I could. And I overlooked the whole project. As you guys know, I published a lot of eBooks before. So we did a really good job and uh, everything looks really good in this guide. I think you guys are going to like it a lot. So if you want to pre-order it, it's on pre-order right now. Um, for the next week, we might launch it within the next three or four days. We're just waiting on a couple things. Um, but definitely check it out, uh, rakeandprofit.com forward slash toys. Later on, uh, we'll share more about it. But if you do pre-order it, we're also going to throw in a uh, little cheat sheet of 10 uh, really hot selling toys that aren't going to be in this guide um, that we were a little hesitant about sharing just because they're that good. So if you do pre-order it uh, over the next couple of days, you will get that. So definitely check that out. There you go, a little secret cheat sheet, rakingprofit.com forward slash toys. But let's dive into uh, this video right now. Why sell toys? That's the question because, you know, we got 171 people watching right now. They're probably thinking to themselves, why would I even sell toys? And actually, we got Mark Rhodes in the house saying, just ordered the book. Congratulations, Mark. So why toys? Vinny, why in the world should somebody sell toys over, let's just say, clothing or shoes or video games. I, I mean, we're not going to discriminate against other categories, but why toys? Um, I think toys, um, I have a, a, a connection to toys and I feel like a lot of people have a connection with toys. You either have kids who play with toys, you play with toys as kids. It's a, it's a very common thing am amongst people and yeah, parents, parents are willing to spend the money. Collectors are willing to spend the money. They're easy to find. You find them at tag sales. You find them at thrift stores. You find them at garage sales. It's a lot of them are low, low cost. Savers has bags for three to three dollars. And there's a bunch of toys in those bags. It's not just like one. Yeah, it's not just one. There's a bunch. Um, they're fairly easy to ship. Small boxes usually. Um, first, do you ship first class most of your toy items? If individually, yes, yes, they will. Most of them will go first class. Uh, profit margins are great. Like Steve said, you buy a bag, you get not just one, you get, sometimes you get a bunch of toys. Sometimes you get a bunch of the same ones. Sometimes you get a bunch of different ones. And 
I want to touch on the last one because um, I had written this one down. What had stopped me in the past, Vinny, from buying and selling toys is, dude, I would look at these things. I have no idea what they are. Yeah, like, I know. Sometimes you can just tell value like with a clothing item. Like You feel it and you're like, oh, this is great. Ooh, what's a Robert Graham? You're like, wow, it's worth 80 bucks. With toys, for me, I look at them and I can't really tell the value. It requires specialized knowledge. And while that obviously creates a, a larger barrier to entry, if you do take the time to learn this, the competition, I feel like, maybe you could disagree with me. I feel like there's way less competition with toys than like clothing and books. Yeah, there's way less competition. Every time I go into the savers, I see people at clothes. I see people looking at shoes. I see people looking at the DVDs and the CDs and the records. But I hardly ever see, besides parents, looking at toys and looking on their phones and trying to look them up. It's almost – You should see this guy. I'm going to take some pictures and post them on Instagram over the next week. I wish I would have taken – I was at the thrift store with you. I don't know when it was. This was probably – we were out with Jeff. This was maybe like a month or two ago. I'm not even kidding. This guy filled up his cart with all toys. When you went to check out, the woman was like, what do you have, 30 kids? Like, yeah. he must have had like 120 different toys. It was unbelievable. Like, that that brings me back to my old clothing days. Like, back when, like, there weren't a million clothing sellers out there. Yeah, the more – the if I have, like, a 30% or 20%, like, I'll load up and and – a lot of the bags are at three bucks, but at thirty percent, it's two bucks. I mean, you can't even get a cup of coffee for two bucks right. now. You know, we got a comment from BRS saying, "I'm mostly selling collectible toys from the '70s, '80s, and '90s, and thought that was back when toys were cool, interesting, durable, and fun." Will you mess with toys, Vinny, that are newer than the the '90s? I will. Yes, there's still there's a lot of popular toys that come out. They are getting a little less. Um, interesting interest to them like some some of the toys have gotten more I, I don't know what the word is but they've gotten more simple yeah like you got your funko stuff that just sits there doesn't move it's not they're not as intricate with all yeah the no parts, so like, like the barbies and stuff exactly yeah because you were talking but, about the example yesterday with barbies but there still is a lot of hot toys out there like kids now with all these youtube shows and um What's the other thing? Like Hulu yeah. and Netflix. They have so many kids shows, and now they're coming out with toys to go with those shows. Right, right. So there is a lot of and, – and now you get more interactive toys. Right. Kids are on their phones, and they got the tablets now. So now there's a lot more interactive toys. So there's – my favorites are the 80s and 90s toys, but there's definitely money to be made in the newer ones too. Mary Beth says McDonald's collectibles. McDonald's. I love we're going to be talking. We're going to be touching on those. I got a picture I'm going to be sharing with you guys. So stay tuned because we got a lot of cool content that we're going to be showcasing with you. Different items to be on the lookout for photography tips, shipping. This is going to be a really good show. Um, 188 people watching live. There was a comment that just came in from where was this comment? It was from, I forgot what they said, but they said something along the lines of, where is it? Oh, okay. Awesome good stuff says 174 watching only 18 likes smash that like button. So do us a favor guys. If you're enjoying this video so far, we only got 40 people that like this video, smash that like button. You want to know what, if we hit 150 likes, you know what? I might give away a free Amazon gift card to people. I don't know if you guys like free stuff. Vinny, do you like free stuff? Of course. I mean, I like free stuff. I mean, if you guys don't like free stuff, I won't give you anything free, but if you do smash that like button, that's pretty nice little enticement, huh? Yeah, <laughs> I would hit the like. Button. I would hit the like button too. So now that we shared with you, you know why to sell toys. I want to know who here has already had success selling toys on eBay. If so, share one of your, I don't know, best sales or one of your favorite experiences in the comment section below. And and here's an example of an item that sold on eBay. Uh, talk a little bit about this. The title reads: Biggest Littlest, Biggest Littlest <laughs> Pet Shop um, Key Treat. Center 90% complete plus extras. It's over $59.99. I mean, I wouldn't even look at this and think it's valuable. What do you see here? Um, well, I see a, a, a set. You know, a lot of these toys are older and they were opened up. They lost a lot of parts. So I think that's where some of the value is, is this 90% 90, 90 complete. Plus he added some extras in there as well. And Little Pet Shop, Little's Pet Shop, it's a hot toy. A lot of collectors, a lot of people looking for it. So I think that's that's why I 
I think that that could have went a little bit higher. Actually. Really? Yeah. That's cool. Awesome. So um, we're going to start to chat a little bit about, well, we're going to touch on four main components that are going to help you to get to the $1,000 a month mark selling toys on eBay. And the first pillar or the first component we want to talk about, which is very important because you can't list your items, you can't photograph, you can't ship, you can't improve customer service. There's no point of implementing all your systems. If you first and foremost don't learn how to source um, profitable items, right? Sourcing is very, very important. And that's why we created Toy Brand Profits, um, which you know is a guide that shares you the 47 of the best, most profitable toys to get started with. But let's dive into sourcing. Let's talk about what are some of the best ways to source toys to sell on eBay. So Vinny, what is your favorite uh, method so far um, on your journey of sourcing toys? What, what advice could you give people? The two best places are, I've noticed, are savers and tag sales, garage sales. Oh, you didn't say Goodwill. Goodwill, <laughs> Goodwill kind of doesn't, they have toys. They're not as many, but they don't have the bags like Saver does. Savers put a bunch of toys in a bag for two, three, four bucks. And I love that because mm. I can buy a bag and not just get one toy. I can get a bunch of different things. And if there's really good stuff in one bag, 10 bucks a figure, sometimes some bags are 40, 50 bucks. Now let's talk about your strategy when you are, because I'm always amazed when I watch you there, man. I remember when I didn't know much about toys, I was just laughing at you. I'm like, yeah, what is this guy doing? I'm like, this guy's just wasting his money. I'm not even lying. I thought it was, I am so 100% serious when I say this. I literally thought, you were starting to get pissed at me too. Yep. You gotta yeah. remember, we've been friends for a while. So we like screw with each other and, you know, bust each other's balls. But like, I'm like, does this guy have any idea what he's doing? Like, you're buying all these random toys. And I'm like, there was a, I'm not kidding, dude. There was a part of me that was like, this guy's not gonna be able to make it. Cause I knew what it was like not selling. Like, when I got started, I was selling little seven, eight, nine, ten dollar clothing items. I'm like, this, it was a pain in the butt. And the, the funny thing is, is that, I was just buying everything <laughs> and like, and that's how I was learning. I was so, so many times I opened these bags and was mm. like looking these things up and I'm like, no way, no way, no way. Like, so that's what got me so interested in it. It's like, sometimes there's those bags are so full that you can't even see what's in the middle of them. I've gotten <laughs> so many little presents inside there and I, <laughs> I know it, it. And there was times where I was getting upset. Like you, but the proof was in my sales. I just kept buying because they kept selling. If they if they weren't selling, I wouldn't have kept buying. That's crazy, man. So I don't know if you guys caught that in that whole explanation. That one of the key things I just learned from Vinny was he was experimenting. He was trying. He was taking massive action. He didn't know everything, but he was buying all different types of stuff, everything and learning. And even no, he was probably making mistakes, buying some stuff that wasn't selling. He was getting these little Christmas gifts or yeah. whatever you want to and call it. The thing that was great about it is it wasn't like buying electronics or clothing where you're spending like seven, eight, ten bucks, and then you got to buy a bunch of them. You're spending like 80 bucks and don't know if any going to sell. I was spending two to three dollars on some of these yeah. bags and like I had a bunch of stuff. So and, and what's crazy and somebody just mentioned it right now because you're probably gonna have a smirk on your face Mary Beth G says well, what about toy parts game pieces accessories? Accessories do really accessories, well accessories clothing shoes actually matter of fact I want to um, I know you guys aren't gonna be able to see this But my Freddie my friend Brandon sent me a message today and said I went back to Goodwill and I found this all uh, GI Joe he, found the old GI Joe. I just <laughs> I just sold those. Yeah, it's all GI Joe accessories um so like the guns and the knives and the little grenades and stuff, this, the accessories do really, really well. Just I've been learning from Vinny. And some older toys like from the 70s, 80s, even broken they will sell. Just a month ago, I found a big bag of G.I. Joe's, the little three and four yep. quarter inch figures, all broken. Every single one was broken. They, they had the middle parts and, and they were like in half. Some were just legs. I put the whole lot up on my eBay and got about 70 bucks for them. Wow. wow. We got a question from uh, Team at Auction saying, Hey, Steve, Mike from Kansas. What's going on? I just came across a huge lot of G.I. Joe new in the box from the 90s. Any thoughts? Uh, how much did you pay for them? Yeah, let us know how much you paid for those items. And uh, Oh, crap. I'm calling Brandon right now. Oops. Sorry. Sorry, Brandon. If you're watching live, I didn't mean to call you. Um, so, yeah, but the GI Joes, new in the box GI Joes from the 90, you're probably looking at maybe 
20 to 40 bucks for most of them. You, harder to find special edition ones will probably be 70 to 80. So if you've got a whole lot of them for like 50 to 100 bucks, that's that's profitable. BRS um, RC says, I went through the same process as Vinny. I just kept buying as long as they were selling. It was hard to phase out the under $5 items. I still have a bunch of cheap stuff now. I'm uh, I'm lotting them. Yes, exactly. That's what I do. Um, I lot it up in junk drawer lots and stuff. So the stuff that doesn't sell, even the stuff that doesn't sell can be lotted up in huge mm. like wholesale lots. Because I noticed I was looking on your sold listings. Like some of these huge lots were only going for like, some of your things were like 18 or 19 bucks. I'm like, eh, it's probably not worth it. But what it is is you're probably just – Those are called the junk drawer lots. You're like, already making your nut on the good stuff, and now that's yes, just – Yes, exactly. So, for example, um, I'll see a bag of animals, okay? And I like to buy these things called Sleck animals or Safari LTD animals. They're little toy animals. And sometimes I'll buy a huge bag of the animals for just two or three of the, the Sleck or Safari LTD figures, but then I'll have a bunch of lo other little animals too. So – I put them all together and maybe over a month of sourcing, I'll have like a whole bundle of them. And after I've made my money off the other stuff, I just put them all for sale in one shot. Awesome. Awesome. So let's um <coughs> transition. You know, we talked about thrift stores, um, obviously garage sales. Um, there's local buying and selling and stuff. We've got a lot of content, so I'm going to kind of just skip forward a little bit more. Um, let's talk a little bit about researching products because now you're going to garage sales, thrift stores, you're sourcing items, you're finding items to buy and sell. Researching the products is very, very important. So for me, my process for researching items, and I'm curious to see what yours is, Vinny. Um, my, my process is when I find an item that's interesting, what I do is I just pull out my smartphone, I open up the eBay app, and then I'll type in the brand of the item, usually the color, maybe a yeah. model number. And what I'm looking for is comparable sales. Like if it's a VTech item, I'm not going to compare a VTech, uh, I don't know, piano thing to like a VTech go-go yes. animal. So you're trying to find like a very close comparable item. And then I'm looking at all the prices. I'm trying to see like what the average price is. That's kind of like my process. What's yours? And can I just make a little comment here? So um, toys – a lot of toys are going to be out. They're not going to be new in the box. They're going to be loose. And it's a little bit tougher to look them up and find the value because you don't have that little scanning, the little scanning trick yeah. where it tells you exactly what it is. Right. So what I like to do is get an idea. And this is why the guide is going to be so valuable to people because it'll help you through this researching process is that I like to look at the years, the company, and what the actual toy is. And, and that's the best way to go and about finding the it. guide, we're sharing that for... And if you can't find the sp specific exact toy that you have, you can kind of see the market for that toy. Like, if you can't... You found a G.I. Joe and you can't find the exact model, but things that are looking just like it are right. 10, 15, 20 bucks, mm. then you you might have something. So how do you know what a good deal is? Um, a good deal is something you can buy for cheap, ship for cheap, and, and make a decent amount of money on. So you're not only you're looking to see what it's selling for, but you're starting to run numbers in your head like, okay, what's this going to cost to ship? Yes, weight is very important. Weight number one tip on eBay: weight is important. It's so important, especially if you're new, because you can get screwed big yeah. time because the cost of postage is going to be based upon. Let's just say you're going outside of like a flat rate box. It's going to be based upon the size, the weight, and then the you know, where you're delivering to the, the, what I like to equate it as the weight of the product should also, um, equal the cost of the shipping. I mean, uh, the cost of the item. Okay. So if something is worth a hundred dollars and you think it might cost $20 to ship it beautiful. But if something's only worth 20 bucks and it's over two pounds, then you know, you're going to be cutting a lot into your profit on shipping. So mm -hmm. I, I take that into account a lot. And that's why I love toys is because a lot of them are light and they're cheap to ship, especially individual stuff. We got uh, Brandon Farr in the comments right now. I just called you by accident, brother. He's like, did you mean to call me when you're live? I'm like, no. Um, Brandon says, I always cheat and choose media mail as much as possible. Oh, that's a bad <laughs> – I don't know about that, Brandon, you naughty boy. I've actually had some of my stuff be opened and torn apart and never saw it again because of yeah, that. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend doing media mail. I mean, you can save money, but it's a bad practice. Um, 
But you know what, Brandon, be sure to stick around because you're actually, your picture is in one of these slides. Mm -hmm. So be sure to stick around. So um, there you there. are right there. So I wanted to know, well, actually, let me give some context to this. I actually was at the thrift store with my mother the other day. This was, was this yesterday? When I, yeah, I think yeah, this was, it was yesterday. yesterday. And um, I, I, Brandon walked in and he said that he found a bunch of GI Joe stuff earlier on. I think that day. Yeah. Thanks, Brandon. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Brandon, I have to take a picture of you to send to Vinny because I know it's going to piss him <laughs> off. And I think it worked. But uh, yeah, there's Brandon. Uh, he's actually in the comments right now. Retro Junk 1987. And uh, Brandon, maybe you could drop a comment and let everyone know what exactly did you find? What do you see in his cart, Vinny? I see some and value it if you could. GI Joe vehicles. Um, I don't know exactly what those are. The the ship, um, what do you call it? The aircraft he's holding looks like a really nice piece. I can't see exactly what it is, but that looks like something really, really nice. Yeah, he's got a lot. I mean, he just kept finding more and more stuff. And eventually he's like, uh, I think I'm going to go find a carriage. <laughs> so like, he loaded everything up. And um, what it is? What'd you say? Did <laughs> you say what it is? Did no. You? Uh, 197 people watching live right now. He hasn't said yet. All he said was, uh, laughing my ass off. Sorry, Vinny. <laughs> so he apologized. He's a nice guy. Um, but yeah, definitely let us know, Brandon, what you found. Um, on the right hand side, I went to Savers. On the left, that was Goodwill, but I went to Savers after and um, I found a box of toys. I didn't know much about it and I sent Vinny a picture. Um, what do you think about what's in this box right now? That looks to me like a no no box. A no no box. A no no box. So, yeah. You know, to me, I'm like, ooh, Power Rangers, uh, Superman. I'm like, this looks good. I didn't buy it just because this stuff wasn't processed. They wouldn't sell it. It was on one of those racks. Yeah. So the Power Ranger is uh, a newer model. Um, I forget what the actual actually are called, but it's not a real true action figure. It's just a kind of almost like a statue that the arms just move, and it has not not really much to it, and they don't go for that much at all. Maybe ten to fifteen bucks. And you got to put them in a bigger box to ship them. It might get over a pound. Yeah. I don't play with them. Uh, the other stuff looks like a bunch of McDonald's toys and not very good ones at that. Newer stuff out of the package. Run in the mill stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, there's like a bad example and a good example. That was just yesterday. Brandon, he's a happy man. And actually, Brandon sent me a Facebook message. He found, um, uh, what did he find? He found a Hulk Hogan. Check out this thing that Brandon found. Hulk Hogan, like it looks like a satin jacket. That thing's got to be worth big bucks. But big shout out to Brandon, definitely crushing it. So let's talk about listing toys. Um, we talked about where to source toys, garage sales, thrift stores. Um, real quick, what about Litgo and Craigslist? I'm um, sourcing them from yeah. there. Yeah, I mean you can you can definitely find some deals there. Some people, a lot of people, are looking these things up to try to value them themselves, but. Yeah. I noticed there are some people who are just trying to get rid of stuff. I'm actually trying to buy something from some lady tomorrow. <laughs> I don't think she knows what she has. So, <laughs> so yes, you can find stuff on those let goes and Craigslist. Uh, Brandon says I paid 40 bucks total for the GI Joe stuff over the last three days at the same Goodwill, $500 plus worth of vehicles and accessories. I'd also pass on the box on the left. He says, I appreciate the shout out brother. Nice. So how do you feel about that, Vinny, knowing that Brandon just walked in, man, and just scooped up $500 worth of profit? How does that make you feel in the pit of your stomach? Uh, it's okay. There's so many toys. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm actually – I'm happy for him. And, um, That's awesome. What there's a, there's a lot out there. There's so much out there. Just when I think everybody takes all the toys, they pop up again. So um, great point right there. Let's talk a little bit about your uh, process for photography. Um, how important are pictures when you're selling toys? Uh, pictures are very important because you're going to have a lot of collectors looking at toys mm -hmm. and they're going to want to see exactly what you're what seeing is the condition and the, my one, what do you call it? Pet peeve on eBay is blurry pictures. Please, whatever you do, <laughs> try to get the clear picture in there. No you matter how good, it you is. You have to have good yeah. lighting though. If you have bad lighting, yes. it's not going to look, it's going to always look blurry. A picture is a thousand words, words, especially with toys. Like, uh, I notice that if I have a better picture and a worse picture, I will even get more views mm. on the better picture than I will on the worst one. Awesome, awesome. And and do you use like a light box or anything? Um, no, I don't. Uh, I have fluorescent lighting in the shop I'm working at, and it works pretty well. 
Okay. Sometimes I do have issues with different color toys and I have to try to play around with it. But most of the time I would get some just like natural lights the best. The fluorescent lights work for me. What's that little sheet or blanket that you're using that you're putting? Cause that, oh yeah, I put like a little- You upgraded um, your pictures a lot lately. Unfortunately, I know people are going to be asking, what's your eBay store? Um, we don't release it just because it causes a lot of issues, competition, and it's just nice to keep privacy. So sorry about that, but- um, I've got access to his store and I saw that your pictures were upgraded lately. What the heck did you do? Cause they look so much nicer. So I added kind of, um, my dad is a sewing manufacturer. He had a bunch of fabrics and yeah. I picked, uh, a color fabric. I liked kind of a neutral color, not white, not black. Uh, it was, it's more of like a tan. And I noticed that a lot of pictures look a little bit better on there. They're not contrasting with the background color. Yeah. So it's just, a um, a tan piece of fabric cut big enough to go over my table and create a little backdrop and that's pretty much it nice nice are you taking pictures with your phone or with a uh, like a point and shoot camera or uh, it's a tablet i'm doing with a, a tablet. tablet yeah oh man getting fancy I, over I, there. I i need an upgrade too <laughs> they're get the pictures could be better so let's talk about what makes up a great listing what makes up a great listing when you see a great listing what does a great listing look like well title is number one title is how people are going to get to your item they'll find you through the yes. search so what upsets me sometimes when people put lot first, mm. because sometimes in, in the search results, like yeah. when people are searching, they're not putting lot of GI Joe's, they're putting GI Joe lot. Mm. So you might not get as many, uh, what do you call it? The algorithm might not hit you as much. Right. So that's one thing. Like a title is very important. I feel like the, the words closer to when you start way heavier. Yeah. The title should be exactly what the toy is. GI Joe. 1956 Hasbro and whatever model and then you it may start be. diving into like the specifics and yeah and anything yeah exactly so I would take the um bigger keywords first and then fill in the rest of the space with whatever specific how do you find in. because I could already see myself becoming very overwhelmed with these toys like how do you find the right keywords like what, what's your process like if it's something you don't even know it's like some rare marks toy or something like so you, at first I was copying listings um, and I still do. If I see somebody who has a nice title and I, I, I always copy from the sold listings. I don't know if it's just something that I want to do, if yeah. it makes any difference or not, but I have this pet peeve where I have to copy from the sold listings and not the listed <laughs> ones. So I do that, but now I know my stuff. So I'll create my own titles. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good tip. Um, how important is the description? Uh, do you just write a sentence? Do you have a script? Do you have a template? Um, I basically, I know you don't really, you said I don't have to do this, but I rewrite the whole title in okay. my description okay. to remind them what it is again. Um, I describe any flaw at all and whether it's a mark, a scuff, I use the word marks and scuffs. Yeah. I, I feel like those are universal and those are best described. If there's broken parts, you have to describe the broken parts. And then um, that's pretty much it. I don't try to promote my stuff in the the descriptions i don't say free shipping i don't i, I don't do anything else but focus on the item mm. itself and the description is basically like someone's buying from a picture so they can't really see everything about it and they're relying on that description for you to feel for them to feel like it's in their hand and they can it can be there so mm. the description is important because yeah, they, they, they're not in a store they can't touch it see exactly it, feel it, see what's going on what else makes up a great Listing. We talked about, you know, obviously taking good pictures, strong keywords, strong title, you know, describing everything. Is there anything else? What about item specifics, uh, return policies, pricing? Item specifics are important to fill all those out as much as best as you can. That, that's going to help the algorithm. Yes. Connect you to the to customer. What I like to do is fill out anything that I can as much as I can, because the more you put in that, the better chance you are of grabbing that sale. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, what do you think is the biggest mistake people make that like screw up their listings? That um, take an item from selling from 30 down to 20. Pictures, uh, a description that says it's very vague descriptions. I, I get very upset with uh, very vague descriptions. Because <laughs> I, I do buy on eBay too. You buy other people's stuff? And I'll tell you what, yeah. And I, and really? I didn't know you did that. I mostly buy video games. We and missed if, that. If we didn't put it in the social extension. I, I mostly buy video games. So if I buy a video game yeah. and I do not see in the, 
description that yeah. there's no scratches or no yeah. marks, I will not buy it. They mm. have to tell me that there's nothing okay. wrong with it. So I would say that that's the biggest flaw is people not describing because then you get, get returns, you get unsatisfied customers, you get negative feedback. Like your description will save you every time. Dysfunctional family says good light is a must, but if you are taking photos under different types of lighting like fluorescent or tungsten or whatever, find out the temperature and set it up on your camera. So that's a little advanced tip right there. Um, I've never done that, but I've watched quite a, quite a few photography videos. I know what you're talking about. That's a really great tip. Uh, reselling with Rob is uh, dropping a bunch of good tips. He's emphasizing the fact that photos will sell way better than the description. I would agree because I, I would say most people will look at the photos, but they're too lazy to read. True. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's a, a good comment. I want to know um, in the comment section, we got 191 people watching live right now. Well, first and foremost, smash that like button, guys. We got 93 likes, but 192 people watching live. I'm no mathematician. My dad is a CPA, so I'm pretty good, but there's some 93 likes. Only, yeah, and only let's get that to 100. Come let's on, guys. Let's get it to 100 likes right let's now. Let's get it to 100. But I want to know what's your number one tip for beginners to create better listings? For the people watching right now, Let's give some of the beginners some great tips in the comments. Um, what's my number one tip for beginners to create better listings? Um, you know what? I would say I'm not going to cop out and say pictures. I'm going to say do your research with the pricing. I see a lot of people either underpricing like crazy or overpricing like crazy. So definitely do your research and do the best you can to try to find comparable sales. Um, and the way you find comparable sales is really finding something that matches exactly the same model, the same size, style, et cetera. What, what do you say, Vinny? Number one tip for beginners to create better listings. I'm sorry. I got to go back to the uh, description. Description. You have to describe your item. Okay. And that's my number one tip is to describe the item. It may take you another minute, but it may matter for that sale to somebody. You know. And, and when I deal with toys, there are people who are collectors and they do want to know. Okay, cool. Um, Kathleen's Boutique is saying show all angles and labels. True. So like, very, very. Do you, do you um, multiple what, pictures? What are we looking yes. at on the screen right now? What are those? Those are GI Joes. GI right? Joes. Yes. Is there going to be some type of uh, watermark? Not a watermark, but like some type of uh, signature or model number on it. For the um, most part, on the back it will say Hasbro and 1980, whatever it is. Okay. So on the, on, the, on the on the butt on the butt yes, and I would take a picture of the front. I would turn around, take a picture of the back, and then I would also snap a picture of his hands. If you can see, there's a little scuff on both of their uh, like left the hands. Like that, huh? I mean, it, it's not going to deter the sale, but it'd be nice if they thought it was a glare or something. It'd be nice to take that picture and emphasize that there is a little scuff on it. Yeah, Lisa. Uh, big shout out to Lisa. I always see her in the comments. And Deb, what up, Deb? Good to see you. Armando, what up, everybody? Uh, Lisa says, disclose all issues. I remember when I was new, I would try to like pull the wool over people's yeah, eyes. No. And it always bites you in the butt every single time. Uh, a little bit reseller says, people are more visual than readers. The more pictures, the better. I absolutely agree. Um, here's an item that uh, Vinny shared with me recently. It is inside the guide, but you're going to find a lot more than just the name in the guide. Um, talk to people about what this is on the screen and why they should be on the lookout for it. Um, those are plastic marks figures. and Dude, those things look like they're worth nothing. I know. Exactly. I would not pick those things up. Well, now I will, but. And I didn't know what they were at first. My dad actually told me, he's like, oh, these are, you know what these are? These are old toy soldiers. Remember when you were a kid, you used to play with toy soldiers? Well, these are when I was a kid and I used to play with toy soldiers. And um, they do have value. They have a lot of value, some of these. 75 I mean, five bucks for this lot. This is a, a hard to find Alaskan set though. Like oh, okay. they, they didn't make many of these Alaskan sets. So <laughs> it's a little bit harder to find, but yeah, most of, most of their the Marks toys, the original Marks toys, because yeah. the mold was resold to different companies over the years. But if you find the original original Marks toys, then okay. yes, they do have a lot of value. And they're just they're just plastic figures. They're small plastic figures like toy soldiers. Uh, Brandon Brandon Farr says, Vinny, shoot me a message after this. I'm trying to plan a little local toy collectible show. Let me know if you're interested in getting involved. Uh oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> The two competitors come together <laughs> for a final face-off. 
<laughs> Winner gets Brandon's. Dude, I, I compete. I compete with my dad every day in the thrift store, so it's, it's nothing new. Um, Fresh Fit Chef says, "What up, yo, from Los Angeles? I just got into the flipping game this month. Also, just became an Amazon seller like two days ago. So, congratulations, welcome." Um, Kelly says, "Thanks so much for the tips. Just pre-ordered." the book. So Kelly just got the guide. I want to know who right now has already pre-ordered the guide. And if you're just coming in, we released a guide, which is called um, Toy Brand Profits, 40, 47 Hot Selling Toy Brands. Um, we're going to talk about it a little more uh, in depth in a couple of minutes, but uh, definitely check it out. First link in the description if you want to check that out. But uh, Mark's Toys, definitely a great item to be on the lookout for, a great brand. Um, let's talk a little bit about shipping toys. You know, you had mentioned in the beginning that you loved, well, one of the reasons you liked selling toys was because it's easy to ship. Um, before we get into some of the shipping stuff, let's talk about storage because that's kind of the prerequisite to shipping. When you sell an item, you got to go find the item. I know this is an area that you're improving on lately. Let's just be honest. It took me a long time to kind of get the hang of things, but um, even though I was kind of giving you some constructive criticism on your storage, you told me that you do have a system in line. I do have a system. I don't know if it's going to work for a lot of people. So this is where you may come in with a comment after this is my system is that with toys, I group them in bins on what they are. So if they're action figures, the action figures have their one bin. And like I said, I know what some of these toys are. So when they sell, I can easily find them on um, dolls go in another bin, plastic figures go in another bin, animals go in another bin. So I kind of part them out by what kind of toy they are okay and that helps me and you could find it that's the key i mean you know one of the things i want to get across to you Vinny, because this is our first video together um you know on youtube and for anyone watching like all because i say i have a way of doing things doesn't mean it's the right way no doesn't mean yeah. it's the best way there's always like there's always like 10 or 20 ways to skin a cat like you know what i mean well and that's funny too it's it's i don't have a tough time because I have a little bit of a photographic memory. Like I'll remember exactly where I put something, even in the corner of the bin I put it yeah. in. So I know that maybe not everybody right. works that way, but that's right. So that's why I don't have a more organized system yeah. because like I, I remember where they go. But just put a system in line, people, you know, get a system, whether it's in bins or um, on shelves or whatever, you've got to come up with a system because once you hit 500 items, a thousand items, once I went over 200 items, dude, it got really hard for yeah. me. Um, so I'm sure for you, you're going to probably start to grow and develop over time. Um, shipping supplies. Do you need a lot of various shipping supplies for toys? Obviously, you need tape. You need a scale. You need – So a lot of the toys that I sell are, are some individual – like most of them are individual stuff. I, um, you're going to need boxes. And I get six by four by four boxes on eBay. I buy them. Okay. For like 20 bucks for a hundred. So they're fairly cheap. The boxes are fairly cheap. The smaller the box, the cheaper it is. So um tape is a must, obviously. What about um do you ever go to the USPS website or you have you have some uh you know priority branded stuff? Yeah, you can priority. I do have them. Um I have about a hundred of them pre-ordered. Yeah, I, I pre-ordered them. I would recommend if you have any bigger items, check out the regional boxes, regional A and B boxes. Um, definitely check those out. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel and type in rake and profit, um, shipping supplies or best shipping method, I have a whole video where I go through, um, just buying all the free supplies and it'll get shipped right to your house. Yeah. Um, should people who are new, dude, I remember when <laughs> this brings me back, man, because it <laughs> brings me back. Cause I made the same mistake. I did too. When I first got started, I'm not kidding guys. Now I was doing clothes, I wasn't doing toys, but still I would I had scaled my eBay business up to where well on Mondays since I wasn't shipping out on Saturdays and Sundays and Mondays I had scaled my eBay business up 5 years ago to the point where I was like selling anywhere between like 15 or 20 items to ship out. I would bring them all to the USPS store and I would have them like put all the put it all in and like write you the pay labels for all the labels there. Dude the people in line would want to freaking assassinate me. <laughs> did, you, did you get the same dirty looks that I got? Dude, try doing it on Christmas. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, you get killed. Wow. Don't <laughs> ship 
at the USPS location, print the labels from home. Like some people are going to say, I get it. Some people who are watching, Vinny, they don't have 50 or 100 bucks in their savings account. They're, they're working on a couple bucks. So they don't have money for a computer or they don't have money for a printer. And I didn't either. But really? Yeah. And that's why I was going to the. So Post how did you office. get yourself out of that crap situation? Selling toys. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! And eventually, Wait. I made enough. To it all make, came for a full circle. Eventually, I made enough money to invest in myself as well as the toys. So got it. So, you know, one of the re recommendation recommendations I would give is you can go to the library and you can start printing out the labels through eBay. It is going to cost you like True. ten cent, ten cents an item, and you're going to have to like pre-weigh everything and come up with like a sheet. Cause you're not gonna be able to bring all your boxes into the library and start measuring and scaling things up. Um, but print your labels from home. A couple reasons why number one, you're going to risk, you're going to save yourself for not getting tackled by an angry customer. Number <laughs> two, you're going to actually save a lot of time. Number three, you're going to save a lot of money cause you actually get discounts shipping through eBay. Number four, you could actually schedule um, the post office to pick up your items. So definitely print from home. Uh, how do you protect toys? Um, shipping them. So I, whether they're lots or individually, I always either put a sheet of bubble wrap around the whole box. Like I, I lay a bubble wrap down or I wrap the toy in bubble wrap. It depends on how fragile the toy is and how much effort I will put into protecting it. But the biggest thing that I will say is for anything you ship on eBay, the size of the item should be about an inch less than the size of the box. You do not want too okay. much swing around room unless it's like um ceramics right, or right. or glass stuff okay then you could you want a little bit more okay more area to stuff it with but the majority of time if you leave stuff rattling around that's how things get broken is when they can jump around in that box so the tighter you can make it the smaller the box you can get it perfect size boxes are a must any extra or additional tips that i haven't mentioned or we haven't chatted about yet um to save money shipping um, that, that is the way to do it. The smaller the box, the better. Do you charge free shipping or do you actually charge, uh, do you, do you give free shipping or do you charge? Um, I give free shipping on all like first class items, all first class items. I okay. give free shipping. Anything that's going to go over a pound. I do charge because it gets funky. Do you do calculated. I do calculated priority? shipping or yeah, always priority because okay. priority and ground are, are, are virtually the same. So I always pick priority because they'll get there way faster. Yeah. Uh, Swartz says, I got my printer for $3 in ink at the thrift store. Still use the same one. I would recommend getting a, a laser printer. Um, do you use the laser printer that I gave you? Yeah. Yeah. That thing's sweet, isn't it? Yeah. It's so fast and you don't waste all that money on the ink. I would recommend what, – what are your thoughts based – you know, you, had, you used to have an ink jet. Now you have a laser. Any pros and cons or just – Um, It'll save you maybe – 20 seconds on each page yeah. on each printing. <laughs> so, and I mean, did you it adds Because I, I remember um, I gave you a uh, Brother laser printer. I don't remember what the model was, but I've got one in front of me now, which is a 2270 DW. That's a good one. I think it was a similar one. Did you end up buying, because you told me that you were running out of toner. Did you end up buying that toner? Yeah, I did. How easy was it to install in? Pretty easy. What was it, like 12 bucks? Um, 16. Uh, it'll probably last you like five months, I bet. Yeah. So it's cheap. Definitely check that out for sure. So those are some shipping tips, storage tips, saving money, some label tips. Um, I want to know in the comments, what is the biggest shipping mistake or mistakes people need to avoid? Wow, that looks like a big mistake. <laughs> Don't make that mistake. Do not <laughs> make that mistake. But I want to know what's the biggest shipping mistake people need to avoid. Um, I would say one of the biggest shipping mistakes is um, – I know you had kind of touched on it. If you're putting something in a box, you can use a box resizer to to to, to uh, compress it so it's not moving around a lot. But use some. You can use some news, newspaper, some bubble wrap. You want to make sure, like, don't sell an item. Like, you don't you don't really. The money might be in your PayPal account, but if it gets to them damaged, it's coming right back out. Yeah. So take time to ship it safely. What about you? What's your biggest mistake that you want people to avoid? And and, and folks in the comments, leave a comment as well. I mean that you touched on my biggest thing. I had, I had some things that got returned because of that same situation and yeah. the extra 20 cents or 30 cents for more sheets of bubble wrap is not worth the 20 bucks. You're going to have to re 
yeah. you know, give back to the person and then get the item back. It's not, it's not worth oh, it. I, so I, I got another tip, but finish your, finish your, oh, that, 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 that was the end of my tip. You ever, um, you ever done this? I've done it before. You ever promise priority and then you see that there's a cheaper method and you use it. Yeah. That's a bad thing to do because people will catch on to that mm -hmm. and they would get super pissed off at you. Um, you know, I just ran into a mistake, um, last week. Uh, so I, I put calculated shipping for this, this toy. It was a big, um, plane. Yeah. And what I didn't do is I put the exact weight, but it was going to California. I think Yeah. I didn't put the dimensions, Oh. right? The dimensions said seven by four by four. And that's yep. a tiny box. This thing was in like a 12 by 10 by yep. eight box. Yep. All of a sudden, eBay sends me a message saying that um, they charged me an extra ten bucks because I didn't put the correct. I didn't know they did that. Length and width, yeah. Wow. They charged me an extra ten bucks because I didn't put the correct length and width, and it was. Uh, Dude, I've been selling on eBay for so long. I've never heard of that before. That's cool. Um, I'm looking to see. Uh, Sierra is saying underweighing is a big mistake. Uh, Lisa says pack how you would want it packed if it was coming to you. That's a good one. Uh, Linda, what's up, Linda? Good to see you. And Kristen Springer, what's up, girl? Linda says, always round up the weight and you will never have a problem. Okay. Uh, Deb is saying, Steve, you can print shipping label without having it print your shipping cost. Just saying. Okay. But what I was saying, Deb, is if you promise someone priority and it's supposed to get there by November 15th, but you do it. I don't know, maybe first class or some ground. slower method ground, and it shows up the 17th, they're going to be pissed. But uh, that's definitely a great tip to uh, hide the – I think it's default that it hides the shipping cost. Um, here's an item to be on the lookout for. Uh, what do we got here? Fisher-Price Imaginex. Did Eagle you say Talon you just found Castle. a bunch of this stuff at Savers? Or did I you... didn't find a bunch of them. I found a bag with maybe six or seven of them in it. Okay. The little figures. You can't really see them too well. But yeah, this is an older castle from an older set, and it's a really cool castle. What do you want to be on the lookout one. for with Imagine uh, Imagine X? Um, Imagine X. Look out for. I like the the original. There's a lot of stuff to look out for. I mean, uh, I'll category. explain it. Yeah. yeah, I'll explain it in the guide. But um, the older ones, um, they're the better ones. They're the figures are a little smaller. The the play sets are a little bit different. Yep. Um, some of them are buildable. Some of them are collapsing, like this one's collapsing. I would look out for knights, like um, medieval knights, yep, yep. cowboys, and pirates. Those were the three hot sets when when this Imagine X stuff first came out. Now they released uh, Imagine X DC Super Friends with um, Batmans and Jokers, and then they did a SpongeBob one. A Scooby Doo just came out, so they have newer ones with newer stuff. But I I like to buy the older ones. The newer ones are kind of the values there, but it's not as great as the older ones. And we do have um, Imagine X in the guide as well, yep. so we really break things down uh, much more. But definitely be on the lookout for this stuff. If you see it, look it up at um, you know in the sold listing. So I want to know right now who is enjoying the show so far. You know this dog right now. He's that, he's loving the show. I mean, I don't know where this is located, this picture, but it's somewhere on the beach. This dog is having fun. I have a feeling there's some people out there watching this who are laying on their floor. Kicking up all four is having a lot of fun like this yeah. dog. So <laughs> maybe that's your dog. I don't know. It might be. Luke says, Yep. Lisa says, I am. We got Chris Morphy saying hello from Canada. Would you be interested to know where everyone's from, Vinny? Yeah, of course. Let us know in the comments where you are from. And I want to know, I wonder if anyone's watching international. I know we got Canada in the house. I want to know who is watching from the farthest locations. Let's uh Let's see who is watching. Drop a location down below. What's up, Jimmy Cash, TGS? What he's, up? He's packing up eBay items. We got Colorado, <laughs> Canada, Baltimore, Phoenix. What's up, Brandon? Good to see you. South California, Ohio, North Carolina, South Florida. I'm peeling potatoes listening from Pennsylvania. We got Virginia, more Colorado, Antarctica. Derek, I do not believe you. Alberta, Canada, Utah. We got Bali. Whew. I always want to go to Bali. Georgia, California, Mississippi. 
Is that crazy that there's like, <laughs> it's yeah. just absolutely unbelievable. So let's, um, let's tie things up. Let's come full circle right now. You know, the title of this show was called make your first thousand dollars selling toys on eBay step-by-step. And we talked about all different types of things from where to source, uh, you know, some of the best items to be on the lookout for best listing practices, photography. What else did we touch on? We touched on a whole bunch of stuff, but now we want to bring things around and really, you know, full cir circle, come back to like, how can you get to this, get to this a thousand dollars a month on eBay, right? Because it's just one of those milestones. People want to hit a thousand dollars. Um, would you say that listing routine is the number one thing, or would you say that some of these other things are more important? Um, other things are more important, but a, a listing routine will keep you organized and like go back to when you were at like 200 bucks a month or whatever. How did you get to a thousand? Like what was the key for you? Was it listing? Allocating more, more time and more listing, oh. more listing. So more time. Into and I listing. also over time got very, I got quicker at it. So the more you do it, the faster you get, the more you can bang out, mm. the more you can do. And I would say, I would give yourself a set time. So say without, without any um, excuses or anything, say I'm going to list from eight in the morning to 12 in the afternoon, or I'm going to list from when I get home, I'm going to eat dinner. I'm going to list from seven until 10 mm. and, and stick by that. Like, like an actual routine that I think that's what you're basically want to describe in this. Yeah. That's going like, to be, yeah, that's going to be your number one thing right there. Like, now, granted, a prerequisite to a good listing routine is going to be picking up the right items. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so it's kind of like you do have to spend your time learning and researching and figuring out what to buy and sell. Do you have? How did did you just learn mostly just by screwing up, or did you spend like I always? I'm a big advocate, and I always tell people like, you know what? Like, if you don't have money to buy a guide or you don't have money to experiment with stuff, just spend time in the sold listings. What What are your thoughts? Yeah. Um while I started selling on eBay and even before I was selling on eBay, when I was thinking about it at nighttime, this is actually a funny story at nighttime. I used to sit up in my bed and instead of watch TV or anything, I would just go through eBay sold listing. It just, <laughs> I would literally type a letter in and whatever came up, I would just look oh, at sweet. different things, whatever people sold. So it kind of gave me a tiny idea. So then when you're at the thrift store, you recognize some of these brands that you were studying. Yeah. A couple things, but then, as I was going to the toy area, I, I don't know. One day I was just in, in this, in savers. I, I believe it was, yeah, I was, I was in savers and I'm like, I never look at these toys. Like I'm like, I'm never, I'm always looking at these clothes. And that day there was nothing there. I couldn't find anything. I'm like, I'm right. going to go check out these toys. And there was one bag for $2. This was back when the bags were a dollar, $2. Now they went up to three, four, not too much of a raise, but the bag was two bucks. And inside one of the bags, I noticed that on, on eBay, a lot of the older stuff, vintage stuff was, was selling and it was hot at the time. So I saw this vintage little rocking horse figure. I'm like, yeah, two bucks. I'll just buy it. <laughs> Bring it back to my shop. Looked it up. Ended up being an $80 toy. Wow. I put it up for bid at 40. It got bid up all the way to 80 like I thought it would. And that's what started me going. Yeah, it came from that learning though. You know, spending yeah. time in the sold listings. What are your thoughts on like improving your business over time? Like good example, you improved your photos recently. Anything else that you're working on improving is, do you have to, like, if you want to go from 200 bucks to a thousand, could you get away with it just by listing more? Or do you have to slowly improve the different parts of your business? Um, yeah, you have to improve on, on all aspects. The, you know, the more you list, the more sales you're going to have, the more customers you're going to have. So you have to make sure the shipping's in line, the descriptions are in line, the pictures are in line. So with more volume comes more effort in all areas. And just like anything in business, I'll touch on this one. Mindset is very, very important. Um, one of the big mistakes people make is they lit their, they lit the competition or they lit like a couple slow days on eBay or and Vinny, we used to have tons of conversations about this and we yeah. still do. Um, but you can't control what these thrift stores are doing. They're jacking the prices up all over across the board. Like there's nothing you can do. They're just doing it. Um, you just have to get better. You can't control shipping prices increasing through USPS. Like 
You know what I mean? Like you've got to have a strong mindset because if you're negative all the time, it's not going to help. You're not going to want to list if you're just pissed off all the time. And you got to believe in yourself too and believe in the formula that you're sticking by. Like, and that's one thing that I do is I have the mindset that like you were saying earlier, I would go to these thrift stores and my friends were laughing at me because I'm buying toy horses <laughs> and Barbies. And they're like, what are you doing, dude? But I didn't let that get to me. I, I, you kept I going. believed, yes, I believed in what I was doing and I was, and I had a little chip on my shoulder. I'm like, I'm going to prove these people wrong that I can turn toys into profits. And I did just that. And that's the reason why I'm here talking to you guys right now. I mean, pretty much it. It was my mindset that I was like, I'm going to get this done. I'm going to accomplish this. So there's a cool little feature on YouTube where people could actually send you money to get their comment highlighted. And we got a comment from Kristen Springer. She just sent me a $5 Super chat. Appreciate that, Kristen. And thank you for always making me learn, trying to learn a lot more before Black Friday. So appreciate the love. Appreciate the tip as well, Kristen. And, um, you know, keep researching. Black Friday is a great opportunity. Um, a lot of deals out there. Uh, check out the video. I put out a video earlier today with Jordan Malik. We shared a lot of really good Black Friday tips for eBay and Amazon. So definitely check that out. Uh, Deb says, got to head out. Appreciate you. Eric says, what up, Eric? Says our local thrift had a 50% off the entire store for three days. We we source on big days like that. Do they ever run half off sales at Sabres for toys? No. No. 30% 30, 30 once in a blue moon. Cool, cool. So I have a question for everybody right now. This is a big, big question. We still got 185 people watching live. Who's ready to get started making money selling toys on eBay? What should people say right now if they're – if they're excited, what should they, what should they say? Toys. Toys. Say the word toys in the comments if you are ready to get started. We have covered a lot of information, a lot of free value. We've been breaking everything down for you guys. And it uh, looks like a little bit reseller says me, Eric right here. Front range, first defense says let's do this, everybody. Larry's in, John's in, Tom's in, Tech Table, Kurt uh loving god forever we got george and mark and hector and keith and luke and lisa and larry and chris man it's getting crazy in the comments right now so if you guys want to take your business to the next level there's a couple things you could do you could spend money buying all the different toys and learning right and making a lot of mistakes but also learning a ton you could go through the sold listings for free it's going to take you a lot of time though. You got to research, you got to go through everything. You got to try to figure things out on your own. Or number three, if you want to save time, if you want a proven method, if you want to be able to get inside of Vinny's brain and know exactly what he's selling, but not only what brands, but really diving into it, check out our newest guide. It's called Toy Brand Profits, a guide to choosing profitable toy brands to sell on eBay. There's a link in the description right now. It's on pre-order, which means if you purchase it, you're not going to get charged. But essentially what's going to happen is you're going to um, kind of get put into this like little escrow thing where like one, when it finally gets released, it'll charge your card in about a week. Uh, it's $19.95. All you got to do is find one toy in this thing. Oh, yeah. Just to what? pay for yourself. Like how many hours and hours and hours do you think it took you to have the knowledge in your head to put into here? Hundreds and hundreds um, of hours. About a year. Like this is a year worth of, of stuff in here, guys. I mean, I – I made sure I put a guide together that is going to be in in depth, but also for beginners as well. Like it, it's not it's, like because when we first started working on this, we were trying to figure out what angle to go. I'm like, yeah, we can give you like there's guides out there. Like I went through a video game guide recently. It's all like the hardest games ever. You're never gonna find any of those no, games. No. Like, and I, I wanted to put a lot of stuff that you do run into. And a lot of these toys I run into all the time. And there's a lot of them, a lot of toys in here that you didn't even know had value. And you maybe don't even know what they are. But uh, I think this is, I wish that I had something like this when you I first started. You said you went through some other guides. We won't call anybody out, but you said you went through some other yes, guides. Yes, I did. I did. And it was just run of the mill stuff that everybody knows check your attic to find a ten thousand dollar wrestler <laughs> like i'm never gonna find that wrestler you know so it was it, i wanted to make some make a, a guide that was a little bit more realistic and and stuff that you can actually find yeah so there's actually 47 profitable toy brands uh that are in here so it's much more than just a list um i think after we're still um 
in, in the final stages of the guide. That's why it's in pre-order. So it's going to be done probably in two or three days. We might launch it in three or four days, but I just put a week just to be safe. Um, it's much more than just a list. You're going to get um, 47 different toys. You're going to get multiple pictures. What are you, three to four pictures per toy? Some of them might have two, but I think 95% of them have like three or four pictures. Some have five. You're going to learn how to identify the hot selling toys when sourcing. We provide multiple pictures for each toy, what toys you should buy for maximum profit. So what's that mean? You share like specific models and yeah, um, there's a lot of brands out there and there's a lot of different lines under a lot of brands. And I just shared the, um, the lines that do well, like uh, the toy lines that do well, um, underneath that brand. So it's a little bit more breaking it down right. it's breaking it down a little more and then we're going to break down what you should avoid which there's always a lot of stuff you should avoid same thing with clothing and stuff too what you should avoid the level of difficulty to find to set some expectations and then what i like to call a special rake and profit jackpot item break that down what does that mean that's a jackpot item it's it's exactly what the it's name rare, name implies it's a rare hard to find profitable Yes, exactly. It's a, it's a hard to find item, but if you do find this item, it's they're out there. Uh, I'm just in little tiny Connecticut and I've, I've found a couple of these jackpots before, so they're out there. So they're not impossible to find, but if you do find them, they are amazing. And then we have a little special note section. So if there's anything we left out or any little notes, um, you know, that'll be in there as well. So yeah. if you do want to check this out, uh, rakeandprofit.com forward slash toys. Again, um, I would recommend if you're not serious about eBay, I wouldn't get the guide. If you have less than a hundred bucks in your bank account, I wouldn't get the guide. I would spend time in the sold listings. I would research. I mean, and even if you aren't huge into toy reselling toys, it might be a good thing to have some extra knowledge just in case the clothes aren't there. The books aren't there. Something else that can fuel your fire until you find the yeah. stuff that you really love. So even if you aren't huge into toys, I would still spend the $20 to buy it. But if you're looking to save time, you want a proven method, you want to go through the guide and you want to just be able to read it a couple of times and start thrifting and know what to look for or check it out. It's $19 and 95 cents guys. It's $19 and 95 cents. All you have to do is find one or two of these items just up front to pay for it. And now you've got this, you know, this asset that can continue paying. There's you. way more value so, in this book than, than it is. Yeah. So, so definitely, you know, check it out if you're interested. Um, Eric says buying the, <laughs> buying the guide. Awesome. Cool. Um, if you guys have any questions, drop a couple questions. We'll hang out for another five or six minutes. Um, yeah. I want to see if anyone has any questions for me. Uh Oh, let's see if we could stump him. I'm I'm really enjoying this, guys. It's my first time being on a live show. This is fun, and I, it's really cool seeing all you guys comment and me getting to talk. So, if anybody has any questions, I mean, I want to soak this all up while I can. Um, Adam says, first time live. Good to see you, Adam. Uh, can you claim it on your taxes? You could absolutely. Um, this purchase that's education. You're learning your business, so I would definitely. Um, you know, I would put that under education, which I believe is a hundred percent write off. Um, but I'm not a CPA, but talk to your accountant, but yeah, you can definitely, um, well, I would, anytime I invest in my education, I always write it off. Yeah. Um, I want to know if you've ever sold, Hey, what's up, Luke. I want to know if you've ever sold Fisher price train sets. Fisher price train sets. Do you mean like a geo tracks? Is that what he's talking? I'm just making an assumption. Um, yeah, I've actually sold, um, geo tracks, the Fisher price geo tracks. Uh, I don't know if there's any other, there's Fisher price, little people train says there's, there's a bunch of different ones, but I've sold the geo tracks trains do well, no matter what, especially around the holiday time. So, um, the geo tracks, uh, you can pick up the tracks, you can pick up the train cars, you can pick up a lot of stuff with that. So I have cool. before and I will continue to. Nova Blast says, what's your favorite 80s toy brand? 80s toy brand. Oh, man, this is <laughs> tough. G.I. Joe is probably my favorite. Yeah. The, the Ninja little, Turtles. Little three, three, four. Well, that, <laughs> yeah, Ninja Turtles. But too. you'll probably come across the G.I. Joes much more often, I'm assuming. Just just holding that 80s G.I. Joe, the little three and qu three, four quarter inch yeah. toy in my hand, like, brings me back nostalgic. Um. Cleaning tips. Somebody a little bit reseller was asking uh, cleaning tips, Vinny. 
Cleaning tips for toys. <laughs> okay, this is actually That's, something. That came off the tongue real nice. This is actually something that I am working on right now. Is a lot of stuff has scuffs and marks. A lot of stuff gets stained. Um, you can find a lot of solutions on Google if you Google them. Um, what I do is it's interesting. I get a um, what are those things? Called? Um, a wool. It's fine wool. Okay. And sometimes you can actually scrape the the markings off. It's on the the surface of the toy. Um, interestingly, WD-40 does get some grind out. Mm. And I also bought, um, a compression. It's a compressor, like air compressor. Yeah. It's a little in a can and that'll blow out any dust and, and whatever else gets inside the cracks of the toys. So I'm actually, this is actually something that I'm trying to improve on is cleaning my toys. Chris Morphy is asking, how patient should you be selling old toys? Um, you gotta understand that. I, I really don't know how to answer that. How patient. Um, sometimes I'll wait a week to sell a toy. Sometimes it'll be six months. Sometimes it'll be eight months. So, I mean, it just depends on how popular the item is. Um, how many people are looking for it. If you have the right price, but I wouldn't give up too quickly on toys. Toys. I've noticed that eventually they do go. There is somebody who okay. does grab most of them. Uh, Luke's asked another question. Do you sell plush and action figures? Um, action figures, yes. I Anytime I see an action figure, I will look it up because there's a lot of them out there. There's some interesting ones out there. Um, plush toys, I do not really play with those. Um, I don't know much about there's them. I never started to buy them. But I guarantee you there yeah. is. And there's, I have sold some. I've picked up some old Mickey Mouses. I've picked up some interesting Paw Patrol, which if you don't know what that is, it's in the guide. I've picked up some of those, and they've done well. So, yes, plush toys can go. Derek wants to know, what about wooden train sets? Wooden train sets. Um, I don't know much about wooden train sets. Hey, man, might have to dive into the soul. Listen, uh, if, when you're in bed tonight, looking if, at some wooden if you're train talking, sets. If you're talking about Thomas the Train, Thomas the Train does have wooden um, trains and tracks, and those do very well. They're a little bit heavier, so you want to try to get them cheaper and maybe in bigger lots, but those are the only wooden trains that I'm familiar with. Man, we got a bunch of people popping on the guide. We got – Dennis Martin popping on it. We got Daniel. We got uh, Brad Miller, Aaron. We got Robert Thompson, Kelly. So congrats to everybody who has um, pre-ordered the guide. I think you guys are going to really enjoy that. Um, when you first start, Vinny, what is the best way to get good feedback? Kurt Ridnor is asking. Um, here's something I do with feedback. Uh, the best feedback is to give your buyer the best experience possible. Mm -hmm. And I noticed with toys Look that how professional you are now, Vinny. <laughs> I noticed with toys that people give me great feedback because it's very nostalgic. I have a lot of people like, Oh my God, somebody just sent me a nice feedback saying like my daughter loves these toys. I play with them as kids. So I think the best way is to give your customer the best experience you can make sure you show them that you cared about the item in listing it, describing it, Packaging it nice. You know, I can't tell you how many people give me feedback about thank you for packaging it nice. Usually people don't pack it very well. Thank you very much. Right. It's very appreciated. So, and another thing that I do, and I, I hate to get this tip away, but I'll share a little tip with you guys that I've kept close to me is feedback is goes both ways. So I noticed I, what I do is I give feedback to the buyer right before they get the item. I will go on my eBay and I'll go through my sold listings and I'll give feedback to the buyer, say, great, great buyer, fast purchase, pleasure to do business with. And I noticed that sometimes it provokes the people to want to respond and give me feedback mm. as well. So I've, I've slowly built up like fast, actually. I, I, I build, you, you were telling me how impressed you were with my yeah. feedback. <laughs> what was it last week? Yeah. And I think that's one of the keys is I go and, and give them feedback and, and, and let them know I appreciate them. And then maybe it, it, it'll force them to do it. Not force them, but it'll. Right, right. Uh, we had a question about return policy on the guide. Um, guys, listen, um, if you guys buy the guide for one reason or another, maybe you get busy and you can't go through it, or maybe you go through it and you decide you don't like toys, um, or you want to know what? Maybe you just need the cash. Between you and I, just send me an email. If you don't like it, 30 days, it's digital. You'll even be able to keep it. Just send me a message. I'll give you your money back. It's only 20 bucks. But I really want you guys to get this guide because I think it's a great opportunity. I think people are passing up these items. 
Um, as you guys know, I'm really passionate about helping beginners and even intermediates and advanced people, but especially beginners to get started because it wasn't long ago I was working at the Cracker Barrel and I was broke as a joke. And, you know, Vinny, you've seen my transformation over the years when, you know, when I used to be hanging out in your basement, smoking cigarettes and yeah. broke as a joke and yeah. trying to get quarters to pick up cigarettes. And, oh man, just like, so like eBay can change your life. And, you know, I'm not telling you, you have to sell toys. It could be clothing, it could be shoes, but you know, I've seen your transformation with toys. Um, so definitely check it out. But yeah, if you want your money back, I would say, guys, get the guide, go through it. I can tell you right now, if you don't make, if you take action and you don't make your money back within in, in the first week, you're doing something wrong. If you don't buy this guide and go out to the thrift store and find one of these toys and make money off of it. Yeah. I uh, mean, exactly. Hector's asking, will the guide cover all kinds of toys? Most kinds there's. There's animals, there's action figures, there's die cast cars, um, a lot of different like play sets. So uh, it covers a, a majority of, but there's so many different kinds of toys. But I say that I touched on most of the toys that are popular. There's still plenty of toys out there. There's that so many. We didn't cover. If this guy does well and it helps a lot of people, which we know it's going to, um, I'm sure we'll come out with another series and continue adding value to you guys. Uh, but yeah, it covers all different types of toys. Um, just looking through the comments, <laughs> Eric, I love it. Uh, Thomas, the train with wooden tracks, the older, the better. You ever mess with any, uh, Thomas, the train stuff, Vinny? Yeah. I, I just touched on that like five minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Eric says transformers all day. Transformers are great. Um, just looking through some of the comments. I just picked up, uh, three rescue transformer rescue bots today for three bucks i had a 30 percent coupon i got it for two bucks three of them you mess with pokemon ever pokemon toys yeah. um i'll only mess i'm giving more hints here but i'm only messing with the ones that are by tom the brand tomy t-o-m-y because uh there's a lot of um what do you call it? a lot of the the china brands have come in and right. they're a lot cheaper so i make sure that they're they either say Nintendo or T O M Y is is the the brand that I'll pick up okay. from them. What about Thundercats? Um, I know you're not big into watching um, YouTube videos and a lot of the entrepreneur stuff, but there's a guy named Gary Vaynerchuk. I don't know if you know who he is or not. It sounds familiar. He's one of the biggest, like, most popular entrepreneurs now, and um, he's got a huge YouTube channel. I think he has like over 1.5 million subscribers. He's like the biggest, most popular entrepreneur out right now. And he's been freaking going crazy about selling on eBay lately. And he's been going to garage. This guy's worth like $600 million. And he's going to garage sales. He's buying like Thundercats and all these toys. And what the heck's a Thundercat? Thundercat is an action figure. <laughs> it's from the 80s. I don't know too much about them, but I have sold one before. But he's going hard with toys. He's going so hard with toys really? and garage sales. Yeah, I'll show you after this video. The price points are so low. It's like, it's sometimes to me, it's a no brainer. I see these people looking at clothes and shoes and I'm like, I. I can't justify spending ten, twenty dollars on something. Yeah, you know, some like the price point for toys are, toys are so low that I, I just love them. So um, that's pretty much it for questions. Um, if you guys have any more questions, drop a comment down below after the video. Um, appreciate all the support. Um, a bunch of people pre-ordered the guide, so congratulations to everybody who pre-ordered the guide. If you're just coming in, uh, we just launched today the pre-order of Toy Bamp. Toy, toy Brand Profits, A Guide to Choosing Profitable Toy Brands to Sell on eBay. Uh, this has been a collaboration with my friend Vinny, who created most of all the content for this guide. Um, I mostly published it and put everything together. And you know, my team, we all put it together. And um, as you guys know, if you've ever purchased any of my other guides, they're always very high quality, well thought out. And uh, like I mentioned, we always have a 30-day return policy. The goal of these guides just so you guys know, if you're wondering why put out these guides, the goal of these guides is to help you. The goal of these guides is to add value, shorten your learning curve, get you to start making money. There's too many people I see who are suffering and complaining about money. And money is one of those things where it's like, if you want to make more money, you've got to add more value. And the way you add value as an eBay seller is going out and sourcing profitable items and bringing them to the market to the people who can't find it. Right, a lot of these items you're finding, Vinny. People can't just go to the store and buy them. No, especially the older ones. Or they don't sell them anymore. Discount. Yeah. So that's the value. So you've got to learn how to bring value to the market, and these guides are not only bringing value um, to you guys, but to anyone who reads it. I mean, you could teach others. And I know Toys R Us is doing some sort of reboot. I'm not really up on that, but 
um, that was another thing that that fueled me too because I knew Toys R Us was struggling, and and I I thought like a lot of people would probably go online for toys. Yeah. So uh, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Uh, we're gonna get headed off right now, but we are gonna record a couple more videos for you guys. If you want Vinny to come back on for another uh, video, you know, type the word Vinny into the comments <laughs> right now. Let's see how many Vinnies. Did you guys enjoy Vinny coming on? This was his who's who's time. a Vinny fan. This is the first time we've ever had. This is actually your first time ever being live. This is my first time ever being live. I'm a little nervous, but I think I did okay. Oh, uh, we got a bunch, but we got a. Wow, man, I, I'm starting to see the Vinnies come rolling in. We got three Vinnies, four Vinnies, five, six, seven. Oh, man, his ego is going to go through the <laughs> roof. <laughs> hey, but everyone, thanks so much for watching. Uh, Vinny, you want to give any final words before we head out? Um, <laughs> <laughs> He was doing so well. I, I was trying so hard to give something like really great of something a final word. Blowing. Um, I will. I will say that. Uh, this is a tried and true method. Tried and true method. Like I went through this, I did it. I've made money off of these toys. Um, the price points are very low. The margins are pretty high. I don't see any competition there. Um, and I started to grow to love these things. Like I love having these toys. I love going to the thrift store, and it, it gets exciting seeing how many toys in a bag and what I can find. So I really hope whoever buys this guide gets the right amount of value from it and actually goes through and, and takes action on it. Cool. And don't forget, if you do pre-order this guide tonight, we're going to throw in a special uh, secret cheat sheet with 10 additional toys. You're going to want these 10 toys. You're now, going to want these them. toys. Are, are toys. These are toys that I wanted to keep secret, but Steve <laughs> will not let me. Well, I told him, I said, <laughs> if, if we're going to do this, we've got to give way more value than anyone would ever expect. So if you do get it tonight, over the next couple of days, you will be eligible to get that cheat sheet. So I think you'll be excited about that. But with that being said, guys, appreciate you all watching, and we will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.